Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, March 9th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game is in 175 days. The game against Michigan in 266 days. We don't even really have time to talk about any of that stuff because I have, I don't want to oversell this, but it might be the single most exciting piece of news in the history of Ohio State football. Okay, brace yourselves. The Buckeyes just landed a commitment from number one, an Australian punter. Already, this is A plus news. Number two, he is six foot seven and 240 pounds. Number three, there is a video of Twitter on him kicking a ball, Australian rules football, apparently 90 plus yards over the roof of a stadium. I'm joined by Mark Giffler. Mark, I'm just going to be here breathing into a paper bag real quick. Uh, let people know what you know about Nick McLarty. Yeah, so he's, he's up to 255 now, Tom. So he's, <laughs> you know, we, we, we continue, you know, they got to figure out this right tackle situation at some point. Uh, you know, maybe Josh Fryer moves inside. I don't know, but um, like massive, like biggest punter I've ever seen in my life. Like not even close. So watch him walk around practice uh, this, this week was was something. Uh, we're trying to figure out which offensive line and her defensive end he was. as a punter. Um, Twenty years old. I believe he's from uh, the Melbourne area in Australia. For all you uh, geography enthusiasts. Um, Big, big, strong leg, big, strong kid, uh, and he'll be able to enroll uh, this summer, and he'll be uh, thrust right into the puncher competition, which is uh, wide open right now and clearly wide open as Ohio State doesn't do this if they don't feel uh, he can come right in and, and compete for that position. So you got a chance to talk to him. So what made him want to come to Ohio State? What made this the, the place that he wanted to do, uh, come punt? Yeah, there were a few things that we've talked kind of throughout the week. I kind of caught up with him on Tuesday after his first, after we kind of figured out who he was, he was on campus. And of course I, I've talked to him since his commitment. Um, and a couple of things that he kept were mentioning was, you know, Ryan Day seemed to really impress him. I think he loved the energy of practice. I think he really felt that environment was, was uh, suitable for him. And uh, the thing he told me after the commitment was that, uh, you know, he appreciates how Ohio State kind of treats and respects the specialists at, in the program and that they're valued as, you know, key members of the team and uh, just felt that this was a, the right fit for him. And he was at that practice, as you said, on Tuesday, the first practice of the spring. And I would imagine it probably had to resonate with him a little bit that they stretch, they do all that stuff, they talk. And then the first thing they do, the first part of practice is they go out and punt. And that is like period one punt. Okay, boom. Like you are coming right out of the gate with that. And, you know, they had uh, Joe McGuire and uh, Austin Snyder and I think someone else punting. But, you know, very clearly this is a this is a wide open job this year. This is also, you know, Ohio State has a pretty good history of Australian punters coming in and being, you know, not only effective, but also sort of beloved players on the team and, Cameron Johnston and Jesse Murko, you know, I would, I would imagine that, you know, people in Australia in general probably don't know a ton about American college football, but if you're a punter, that, that's gotta be, a, you know, looking at college football from Australia, from an Australian's perspective, Ohio state has to be kind of near the top of the list of places that, you know, you've heard of, you've, you've seen them have a lot of success and you've seen Australians have a lot of success there. Yeah. And Joe McGuire is, um, on campus now is, is on the roster now another Australian. So yes, it's, it's, I think it's becoming a bigger thing over there of like, okay, this is kind of how you get to the NFL is you, you know, it's, it's, you know, things, sports are kind of different in that part of the world where there's not a lot of like college. It's kind of like you start as like a youth and you kind of work up through these like international programs uh, or these national team programs and stuff like that. But with, with football obviously works uh, quite a bit differently. And I think, uh, I think Ohio State, again, as you said, I think Ohio State's success, um, their continued relationship with uh, with Australian punters and bringing them over, I think that's obviously given them a leg uh, leg up on a lot of uh, these uh, other programs as far as recruiting these guys because there's so many of these guys who, whether it's they try soccer or rugby or whatever it might be, and you know maybe they're good at it, but they're not maybe professional good, and uh, they, they kind of – choose this path a little later. You know, Cameron Johnson was a, was a much older guy. Uh, Nick is 20 already. So he's going to be a, a pretty old uh, guy for a freshman. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's when you can do something like this, I kind of look at it as like, uh, here's kind of an obscure hockey reference, but like 
before like hockey went national, like international, like the NHL went international, uh, the Red Wings were like a huge thing because they would bring over all, all the Russian guys went to Detroit at, at first. And so like the Red Wings became kind of this dream program for these international players, these Russian players. And so I, I think Ohio State's kind of building a little bit of something like that where it's like, hey, we, we just keep bringing these Australian guys over. They keep doing well and then they, they go to the NFL or they have success. And so it's, it's definitely helping. And you mentioned a couple sports that they play over there and rugby and soccer, but Australian rules football feels like that's where they're getting a lot of these guys as well. Because, you know, I mean, I'm going to sort of lean on you a little bit here, but my understanding is there's a lot of, you know, it's sort of like rugby, but you're sort of running and you kick the ball and you've got to be really precise with your kicks, which feels like that has translated pretty well in terms of, you know, how is Cameron Johnson able to kick the ball 60 yards and kill it on the one yard line? Or how is Jesse Murko able to have a, you know, line drive punt that rolls out of bounds at the one? And it's like, well, you know, this is a small portion of the Australian rules football game, but it is kind of the entirety of the job if you're a punter in college football. Yeah, I think, you know, I, look, I'm not an Australian football rules expert, but what, what I would say is you're seeing these guys have several different types of kicks in their bag, which is unusual. You know, I think when you think of like, you know, the, the, the old American philosophy, and I think this is, I think Australia has kind of pushed some of their influence into how like now younger American punters are training. But um, when you think of like traditionally like American punters, it's just kind of your straight drop back, you know, kick, snap and kick. And so you've got all these different kicks that they have to execute for these other sports they play. And so it gives them all these different, um, you know, whether it's a different angle, a different um, trajectory, spin, like there's all these different things they can do because they have to do those things for the, these other sports they play in Australia. And it just situationally makes them um, really, really good punters. I mean, like I said, it, there's almost a different punt for every situation. And before, right before we started watch, started recording, I uh, sent you the video of, of McLarty that he posted on Twitter last November that uh, the caption says he's punting a ball 90 plus yards over the roof of a stadium. Now I have not gone out there and, you know, paced this out. So I cannot personally vouch for the fact that this is 90 plus yards. That was still, he kicked it and you kind of went, Whoa. And that, you know, you gotta have a lot of, you gotta have a lot of clubs in your bag. If one of those clubs is can kick a ball, even if it's just 75 or 80 yards, uh, that feels like, you know, sometimes you got to pull the driver out, Mark, and it feels like that is potentially a really exciting club uh, for an Ohio State punter to have in his bag, just in case. Yeah, I saw the clip. Um, I'm going to assume that he and his team are not sophisticated enough to, like, do, like, some AI, like, crazy edit on that because it definitely leaves the stadium. And it, it yeah. Do we have the tape measure out? No, but uh, I can just tell by looking at the, the field, it, that's a long way. It's, he kicked that ball far and high. So it uh, looks like he's got a, a big leg. You would obviously suspect he does at 6'7", 255. You expect he gets some power behind that. Um, but, yeah, he's just uh, – this is fascinating. It's been, a, it's been a story that just kind, of, just kind of sprouted up on us on Tuesday and it's just kind of been a fascinating thing here to, to follow this week. It, this just popped into my head, but have you seen the video or the photos of Andy Reid in the punt, pass, and kick competition when he's a little kid? It, it feels like, well, little kid, that, that might be uh, not quite an accurate representation of what those photos show, but, you know, boy, I, I am so intrigued what a six foot seven punters looks like. It's, it, Australian punters we have seen before, always, you know, always entertaining, always, you know, able to do stuff that you kind of go, wow, how the heck did he do that? Six foot seven Australian punter. That's a new one on me. I'm guessing that's a new one on probably just about everyone out there. Finally, finally, Mark, something for people to look forward to with Ohio State football in 2024. All of the other stuff, plus the new guys, plus a six foot seven Australian punter. Man, oh man. Should be a lot of fun stuff to uh, watch this spring and summer and fall in Columbus, Ohio. Should be a lot of stuff to talk about as well. And if you'd like to talk about it all with us, you can do that at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the team. Mark, Covers recruiting. Mark is in a hotel room right now because he is out of town talking to a bunch of uh, top prospects. He just posted some great insider information on the huddle board at BuckeyeHuddle.com about that trip. He also uh, was talking to Nick McClarty this week. Lots of good stuff coming all at BuckeyeHuddle.com and at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. We hope to see you there.
That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.